Welcome to our A Taste of African Heritage teacher training webinar. Um, a lot of what the program is showing you is um, the history of your people, um, the history of a people. So a lot of the, the ingredients or the foods that are consumed have been there for generations. We're not telling people what they don't already know. They eat the collard greens, they eat the, the grains. Um, we're just putting it into a new perspective to provide an empowerment which is missed in these communities and the empowerment is being in control of your own health uh, through your food. I think that the support I get from Old Ways in doing this class, because don't feel like you're out there by yourself dangling on an edge somewhere. You don't, it, it, and you're not. Uh, Old Ways is there with you. They obviously provide you with the curriculum and the things that you need to be able to to uh, deliver to this class a, a structured learning experience. But if you have any questions, I've never had a question that I couldn't get answered. If In this webinar, to help you teach a taste of African heritage and a children's taste of African heritage, you will learn best practices for cultural competency, the history of the African diaspora, an introduction to the African heritage diet, a lesson by lesson overview of a taste of African heritage and a children's taste of African heritage, as well as best practices and teaching tips. We also have seven teacher training quiz questions embedded throughout the webinar so that you can quiz yourself as we go along. A Taste of African Heritage was developed by Old Ways. Old Ways is a nonprofit dedicated to improving public health by inspiring individuals and organizations to embrace the healthy, sustainable joys of the old ways of eating. Heritage-based diets high in taste, nourishment, sustainability, and joy. A Taste of African Heritage celebrates the food traditions of a wide multitude of cultures grounded in African heritage. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, practicing cultural competence to honor diversity means understanding the core needs of your target audience and designing services and materials to meet those needs strategically. Here are a few important cultural competence skill areas to keep in mind when teaching a taste of African heritage. First, structure a taste of African heritage as a constant cultural exchange. Continually invite students to share their personal experiences, perspectives, and cultural traditions surrounding the foods and topics covered in a taste of African heritage. Learning from others is how we grow as individuals. Second, value diversity. Welcome and respect differences. Differences of opinion, backgrounds and customs, communication styles, traditions, and values for dynamic group learning. Third, be culturally self-aware. Understand that our own culture the sum of our individual experiences, knowledge, skills, beliefs, values, and interests shapes our sense of who we are and where we fit into our family, school, community, and society. Next, always use inclusive language. Use inclusive we language rather than isolating you terms. Use language that reflects what people call themselves Take time to find out what words your participants use for their cultural identities and experiences rather than making assumptions. Lastly, learn about your students' cultural roots. On the first day of class, lesson one invites students to share their cultural and geographic backgrounds, food memories, health histories, and more. Take the time to learn about your students' various backgrounds, celebrate them, and pull from them throughout the program. Understanding your students' daily experiences will also help you reach them in a more conscious, authentic, and effective way. 
When teaching, be mindful of your audience's different income levels and keep costs in mind for your ingredient purchases. Also be mindful of local access to healthy foods in their neighborhoods. You can help students identify the best produce selections in their neighborhoods. Suggest substitutions if ingredients are not read readily available. Also be mindful of local grocery markets where SNAP benefits are offered, as well as transportation access. Help students plan their weekly grocery shopping routine. Lastly, be mindful of kitchen equipment. What do they have and what do they need? I always ask people, what brought you here? You know, it's a good way to get to know your students. And one lady said to me, she said, you know, my son didn't want me to come. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, because he's afraid that I'm going to come home and cook some type of weird food. She said, but I'm here because I need to learn how to cook healthy. My doctor has already advise me that I have hypertension, I want borderline diabetic, and I don't want that for me. So I want to learn how to be able to be healthy, and I also want to be able to share it with my family. And I just thought, how brave of her. All right, so as I mentioned before, we have a handful of quiz questions embedded throughout the webinar to keep you on your toes. So here's our first question. Which of the following factors are important to understand and acknowledge when teaching and counseling your participants? A, participants' income levels. B, food access in participants' neighborhood. C, what basic kitchen equipment they are missing. D, transportation issues and solutions. E, sharing which local grocery stores and farmers markets have the best produce selection. Or F, all of the above. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, the correct answer is F, all of the above. All are important factors to consider and acknowledge when teaching. Africa is a continent, not a country. Africa is extremely diverse, both culturally and geographically. There are 54 countries in Africa and over 1,500 different languages. It is the second largest continent in the world. Size-wise, you could fit the United States, most of China, and India in the continent with room left over. The culinary diversity in Africa has been shaped through geography, climate, trade, and cultural influences for centuries. African diaspora is the term used to describe the mass dispersion of peoples from Africa, primarily Western and Central Africa, to different regions throughout the Americas and the Caribbean, primarily during the transatlantic slave trades from the 1500s to the 1800s. The ancestors of African Americans brought many wonderful food traditions to parts of the Caribbean, South America, and the southern states of the U.S. The combination of these traditional foods, along with the foods they adopted, resulted in a resourceful, nutrient-dense culinary tradition rooted in wholesome plant foods. This practice of bridging culinary traditions continues today. Africa is the second largest continent on Earth, so it's not surprising that it is home to many different communities, climates, geographies, and agricultures. Most African American cultural foods, such as collard greens, black-eyed peas, watermelon, and okra, have their roots in Western and Central Africa. A classic West African meal consists of a hearty vegetable or peanut soup, poured on top of a starchy side, like yams or millet. Beans are eaten in abundance throughout the continent too, especially black-eyed peas and kidney beans in West Africa, and chickpeas and lentils in East Africa. The West Indies and the Caribbean bring tropical accents, peppery sauces, and various seafoods to the African heritage diet. 
The origins of Afro-Caribbean cuisine date back to the arrival of African captives to the sugarcane plantations throughout the islands. Early Afro-Caribbean people grew okra, yams, and many types of peas and greens, preparing them in the ways they did back home in Africa. Cooks adapted their African culinary knowledge to the Native American and European cooking techniques they found in their new home. There are almost 100 million people of African descent living in South America, mainly in Brazil. Afro-South American cuisine emerged with African, Spanish, Portuguese, and Native American influences, as well as the natural influences of the ocean and tropical climate. The roots of early African American food staples came from Africa, southern plantation houses, enslaved people's private gardens, and foraging in the wild. Vegetables were abundant, cabbage, okra, tomatoes, peppers, and several types of greens, including collards, kale, dandelion, mustard, and turnip greens, to name a few. Other foods enjoyed in Africa, like peanuts and black-eyed peas, were popularized and cultivated throughout the South, and one-pot cooking survived in vegetable mix-ups. Food is just one aspect of culture. Here are some examples of other African heritage cultural traditions, from celebrations, to spiritual traditions, to cultural movement and dance, to music and clothing. Each lesson in A Taste of African Heritage begins with a cultural discussion. Here are some ideas to help stimulate conversation, connections, and understanding among your participants. Storytelling is a great tool. Sharing about your own culture can help others to feel comfortable sharing theirs. Share food stories specific to your cultural heritage and invite students to do the same. What foods or food preparations are similar? What food traditions have been maintained and how? Share about different travel experiences and foods eaten abroad or in different parts of the U.S. Share about childhood foods and how personal diets have changed. To help students make connections, share what you know is culturally similar and what is different across the African diaspora. To help students increase their understanding, talk about the class's misconceptions of the African diaspora. Talk about what sharing and learning about the African diaspora can do for our understanding of the cultures from that region. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. This is a beautiful quote to segue us into a discussion of the African heritage diet. The Southern diet of fried foods, processed meats, added fats, and sugary beverages is often seen as the traditional diet for many African Americans. But in fact, a healthier, more traditional model can be found by looking to the foods brought to the New World by Africans. The chronic diet-related conditions we know today were much less common with traditional diets in earlier times. They are also rare in places that have held on to their eating traditions around the world. And in this slide, we're kind of comparing the traditional African heritage diet pattern to the modern standard American diet pattern, which some people call the SAD diet. According to the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, healthy eating patterns are designed to be flexible in order to accommodate traditional and cultural foods. Individuals are encouraged to retain the healthy aspects of their eating and physical activity patterns and avoid adopting behaviors that are less healthy. Professionals can help individuals or population groups by recognizing cultural diversity 
and developing programs and materials that are responsive and appropriate to their belief systems, lifestyles, and practices, traditions, and other needs. So the Dietary Guidelines for Americans encourage us to eat more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and have less sugary beverages and salty deep-fried foods. So this quote from the Dietary Guidelines shows how the African heritage diet can help bridge the gap between education and behavior change by presenting the principles of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans in a context that is culturally relevant to African Americans. The Mediterranean diet is a well-known cultural model of healthy eating. But for a lot of people, the African heritage diet is unfamiliar, even though both diets are based on a foundation of healthy plant-based staple foods, using animal foods as more of a garnish, and use of lots of fragrant herbs and spices for flavor. The African Heritage Diet Pyramid illustrates the healthy foods and traditional eating patterns of the African diaspora. It celebrates the healthy culinary traditions practiced by people of African descent across Africa, Central and South America, the Caribbean, and the American South. One symbol that we use a lot at Old Ways and that you'll see throughout our curriculum is the Sankofa symbol. This symbolizes bringing the best of the Old Ways forward and it perfectly captures the spirit of the African heritage diet. In addition to the bird Sankofa, there is also a heart Sankofa that we use throughout our materials as well. Okay, so we have our next quiz question. Shifts from traditional to modern lifestyle patterns include increases in all of the following except A, unhealthy types of fats, B, sodium, C, physical activity, D, refined sugar, or E, all of the above. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it here. The answer is C, physical activity. Um, as we've shifted to a modern lifestyle, we have not increased our physical activity, unfortunately. Bryant Terry further explains the importance of this cultural approach in his cookbook, Afro-Vegan. He writes, Culturally appropriate food is an important criterion for determining what is healthy, and people of African descent need not look any further than our own historical foodways for better well-being. It is vital that we incorporate African and African diasporic vegetables, grains, legumes, fruits, nuts, seeds, and cooking techniques into our kitchens. The nonprofit group Old Ways Health Through Heritage took a major step in illuminating the importance of eating African ancestral foods when they created the African Heritage Diet Food Pyramid in 2011. This revision of the antiquated one-size-fits-all food guide pyramid encourages us to consume lots of culturally appropriate leafy green vegetables, tubers, fruits, whole grains, legumes, seeds, and nuts. Okay, so now we have another quiz question coming up. Which of the following characteristics best describes the African heritage diet? A, it is a similar eating pattern to the Mediterranean diet. B, healthy staple starches such as squash, pumpkin, tubers, root vegetables, and yams are primary foods. C, Meat, poultry, and wild game are eaten minimally, often used as flavorings. D meets the nutritional guidelines linked to improved cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and stroke. Or E, all of the above. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And the answer is E, all of the above. Like the Mediterranean diet, the African heritage diet is based on a foundation of healthy plant-based staples, 
while meats can add small amounts of flavor um, as a garnish. Okay, we have another quiz question here. What are the key features of the traditional African heritage diet that contribute to good health? A, plant-based, lower in animal protein like red and processed meats. B, lower carbohydrate intake. C, increased use of healthy herbs and spices instead of salt. D, emphasis on whole, minimally processed foods. E, eating meals with others. F, those listed above except B. Or G, those listed above except E. So a lot of choices here. Give you a few seconds to decide. And the correct answer is all of these above except B. So the African heritage diet is uh, not a low carb diet because healthy carbohydrates like um, whole grains, yams, and things like that are all an important part of the diet. Today, African Americans are disproportionately affected by health conditions like high blood pressure, heart disease, and obesity. According to researchers in the study, Body Size Perception Among African American Women, 56% of overweight women, which is defined as the BMI of 25 or greater, and 40% of obese women, which is defined as the BMI of 30 or greater, did not classify their body size as overweight, obese, or too fat. This is because there is often a disconnect between the medical definitions of overweight and obesity and cultural definitions of desired body size. To best encourage lifelong healthy habits in the face of different cultural beauty norms, take the focus away from weight, body size, and fatness. Promote healthy eating for well-being rather than focusing solely on weight loss or physical appearance. It is important to respect the diversity of body weights and shapes around you and avoid body shaming. Here's our next quiz question. African Americans are likely to suffer disproportionately from which of the following conditions? Obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease mortality, diabetes, or all of the above? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Unfortunately, the correct answer is E, all of the above. Before we transition, we want to remind everyone that despite health disparities faced by African American communities, Heart disease is not a part of heritage. What is in heritage is a healthy heart, strong body, and vibrant and delicious foods. Now we're going to take a closer look at a taste of African heritage, the six-week cooking and nutrition curriculum from Old Ways. This curriculum has been taught in more than 100 cities across the U.S., in 2018, we introduced a children's taste of African heritage, catered to 8 to 12 year olds. It is a seven week curriculum and covers many of the same topics as the adult curriculum, but for younger audiences. Each lesson for both children and adults is about one and a half to two hours long and includes a mix of nutrition, culture, and cooking. All of the recipes are designed so that they can be made on a hot plate, um, so you don't have to have an oven or a full kitchen setup. Um, a good supply of cutting boards, measuring cups, knives, and mixing bowls will be helpful though. The teacher's curriculum includes a full list of required ingredients and cooking equipment. Groceries for the six-week series typically run about $250 for the entire six weeks, assuming a class of about eight to 10 people. If you have your teacher's curriculum in front of you, it might be helpful to flip through as we go along. 
I, I always have this high buzz in my class, always this high buzz in my classroom of excitement as everybody's doing the chopping and the preparing, et cetera. But once that food is done and you smell the aromas and then it's done and then, hmm, then it doesn't take any waste of time before they're there serving themselves. I mean, it's immediate and the room just becomes quiet. There's a hush over the room. So you know that food is good when you go from this high dynamic uh, sound and then all of a sudden silence. And then I'll come in and I'll just kind of do a wrap up as they're eating to talk about, okay, what are we eating? And talk about the importance of whatever that might be. If, it, if it's greens, it's greens. If it's tubers, if it's, if it's beans, if it's whole grains, we kind of chat in between and everyone can relate and tell their stories about uh, some people are from the islands and they'll tell us about how that food was prepared in their, in their countries and others are maybe from the south or, or some are uh, like, well, my mother just opened a can, so this is new to me. But it just is such a wonderful dynamic. I find so I, it's it for me it works great for, I think for my the participants in my, participants in my classroom they always seem to be very thrilled by having the experience before starting each lesson it's important to read through the chapter in advance to familiarize yourself with the material in the first lesson we start by walking participants through the pyramid section by section explaining the foods and the nutritional recommendations. We also discuss the regions that make up the African diaspora and discuss some of the key culinary characteristics and dishes found in each region. Encourage your participants to talk about their experiences or lack of experiences with these cuisines. In A Taste of African Heritage, the adult curriculum, the introduction is combined with the lesson on herbs and spices. In the children's curriculum, the introduction is one lesson and herbs and spices are in week two. This is why the children's curriculum is seven weeks instead of six like the adults. One of our key messages is that spices are a great way to increase flavor without adding sodium. Some of the spices and herbs that we focus on include allspice, ginger, paprika, curry powder, and cilantro. Lesson one of the adult curriculum includes two recipes, while the children's curriculum has some hands-on sensory activities instead. The recipes for lesson one in the adult curriculum are jollof rice and spicy chickpeas. It can be helpful to prep some of the ingredients ahead of time. Have you cooked any African heritage dishes? Based on feedback from teachers of the program, here are some tips for the first lesson. Have your class read the Health Through Heritage Pledge out loud together to establish student connection and commitment around the pledge. Encourage students to connect with Old Ways A Taste of African Heritage Facebook group page for even more peer-to-peer -peer support. Engage your students in discussions about their cultural ancestries, personal food traditions, and cooking experience, family health, food experiences while traveling, and visits to African heritage restaurants in the U.S. Pull from your experiences to relay the information. Have you lived or traveled outside the country? If so, where? Have you been to Africa, the Caribbean, South America, or the Southern U.S.? What was the food like in those places? How was the food different from the standard American diet? Have any of your friends grown up or lived in African heritage regions? Have those friends cooked for you? Have you ever eaten at an African, Caribbean, or South American restaurant? Can you remember garden-to-table meals with your parents or grandparents? Any questions or concerns about lesson one? Leafy greens have their own lesson because greens are one of the most celebrated foods in African heritage culinary traditions. They are packed with nutrition and are very low in calories. And because of their nutrition, they are at the base of the African heritage diet pyramid. 
Some of the African heritage greens highlighted in this lesson are collard greens, kale, mustard greens, dandelion greens, lettuce, callaloo, beet greens, turnip greens, spinach, arugula, watercress, sorrel, bitter leaf, and chard. In this lesson, we'll also cover the concept of quick cooking leafy greens to retain nutrition and flavor, as well as how to shop for leafy greens and how to cook with them. Here are some of the recipes featured in the leafy greens lesson. The spinach and cucumber dill salad in the green smoothie are in both the children and adult curriculum, and the tangy collard greens and greens mix-up are just in the adult. Here are some tips for teaching the leafy greens lesson. Display the greens so that students can see them. Prep what you can ahead of time. And if you get questions about it, address medical conditions, medications, and leafy greens. There are some medications and health conditions that have contraindications with diets high in leafy greens due to their high vitamin K and oxalic acid content. So we have a handout about this um, so that you're comfortable discussing this topic. Um, so you can refer to our eating leafy greens with certain health conditions and medications um, on our online training. And then lastly, pull from your own experiences to relay the information. So talk about your favorite leafy greens, um, ask people about their perceptions of quick cooked greens, um, talk about if leafy greens were cooked in your home and if so, which ones? The next lesson is focused on whole grains. Many of the ancient grains that are very trendy today actually trace their roots back to Africa and have an important part of African heritage cuisine. In this lesson, we'll cover the definition and parts of a whole grain, health and nutritional benefits of whole grains, how to identify whole grains using the whole grain stamp, whole grains and their uses in African heritage cooking, and then we'll do some cooking with African heritage whole grains. These are some of the whole grain recipes featured in this chapter. Millet is sometimes hard to find, so you can certainly make the zucchini and chickpea dish with another grain like brown rice or quinoa, and you can also make the porridge with oats. Uh, just keep in mind that, you know, if you're uh, replacing some of these grains that the cooking times and the amount of liquid used may need to be adjusted. So here are some tips for teaching the whole grains lesson. Um, many students are surprised to learn that so many whole grains have cultural ties to Africa. The connection between nutrition and culture helps motivate students to choose whole grains or over refined grains. Emphasize this connection in class when you talk about each grain. Also, and this one's pretty important, be sure to tell your students where you purchased your whole grains so that they can easily find them too. If you have trouble uh, finding any of the whole grains for the recipes, consider more accessible whole grains as substitutes. You want your students to be able to easily find these ingredients when they leave for class. The next tip is to bring in examples of different whole grains and products with the whole grain stamp on their packaging. And then lastly, use your experiences to relay the following information. What whole grains do you eat at home? Are you familiar with the whole grain stamp? What African heritage whole grain dishes have you tried before? Beans and rice are the feature of the next lesson. Beans and rice are a staple of African heritage cooking and traditional diets around the world. Making them one of your new staples will help keep you healthy and add a big dose of heritage to your meals. We also want to emphasize that even though white rice is common today, African ancestors ate healthier whole grain rice that was processed by hand. The beans and legumes featured in this lesson include black beans, black-eyed peas, chickpeas, lentils, lima beans, kidney beans, fava or broad beans, butter beans, garbanzo beans, and then pigeon or Congo peas. Here are some of the beans recipes for this chapter. 
The cold black eyed pea salad is especially great if you're doing demos or events or things like that because it doesn't require any heat source. Here are some tips for teaching beans and rice. Display samples of dried and canned African heritage beans so that your students can see them. Also, a key takeaway from this lesson is the positive health benefits of plant-based meals, at the same time explaining that you don't have to be vegetarian to eat vegetarian meals. Benefits of eating vegetarian meals include increased nutrition, meals naturally lower in calories, affordability, that it's good for the planet, and because it's closer to tradition. Lastly, pull from your experiences to relay the information. What kind of beans do you love best? Do you eat them often? What are some vegetarian meals that you enjoy eating? In this lesson, we'll be discussing tubers' prominence in traditional African heritage cooking, where to find healthy tubers and how to choose them, and how to cook with African heritage tubers. The tubers featured in this lesson include yuca or cassava, taro, yams, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. The mafe is probably the most popular recipe of the entire curriculum and is featured in both our adult and children's curriculum. Other tuber recipes are the irio and the boiled plantains. Here's some tips to help you teach about tubers and mashes. Bring in a variety of tubers to show students or bring in photographs of different tubers and potatoes grown across the African diaspora and regions. Identify African, Caribbean, Latin American, and international grocery stores in your area to share with students to help them find a greater selection of African heritage tubers. If you can bring in fufu or cassava flour to show students, even better. Note the potluck suggestion on this week's homework page, inviting students to bring an African heritage dish from home for a last class potluck. And lastly, pull from your experiences to relay the information. Have you ever eaten or prepared traditional tubers other than potatoes or sweet potatoes? Share your experiences and ask your students to share theirs. Our final lesson is about fruits, vegetables, and an overall healthy lifestyle. We will cover the nutrition and cultural heritage of fruits and vegetables, and also discuss other factors besides food that impact overall health and well-being, such as positive feelings and lowering stress. The featured recipe for this lesson is a mango and papaya after chop fruit salad. This is another great demo recipe that doesn't require heat. We also have a cabbage recipe for the adults and an okra recipe for the children. Here are some tips for teaching about fruits, vegetables, and healthy lifestyle. First, take a minute to review the Healthy Heritage Pledge at the beginning of class with your students. Discuss successes and challenges that they have experienced following the pledge. Discuss ways to incorporate these healthy foods and eating patterns and to address their specific challenges. Use the pyramid to review all of the different vegetables already covered so far in the program, paired with spices, mixed with whole grains, etc. And discuss different traditional healthy lifestyle practices. Take your time with the healthy lifestyle activity. Students really appreciate the time to check in with themselves about other areas in their life that need nourishing. Lastly, pull from your experiences to relay the information. What fruits and vegetables do you eat most often at home? How do you nourish your life? Yoga, walking, art, spirituality, friends? Okay, so we've got another quiz question coming up. Goals of the A Taste of African Heritage program include all of the following except... A, shining a light on the healthy eating practices that once sustained and protected the health of African-American ancestors. B, sharing that in spite of current health disparities, diabetes and other chronic diseases are not inevitable. 
C, sharing that healthy foods and healthy life are a part of African heritage. D, encouraging students to eat more plant-based meals and plant foods is part of reclaiming cultural traditions. Or E, motivating students to eat a diet high in animal protein and low in whole grains, starchy potatoes, and beans. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it here. And the correct answer is E. Our goal is not to motivate students to eat a, high, a diet high in animal protein, low in whole grains, and starchy potatoes and beans. Um, so I think my tips for any new uh, instructors would be do your homework, um, not just on old ways as an organization, um, but any kind of uh, passions you have for the, the information that you're going to be presenting on, and also the student base that you're going to be working with, since it can be um, people who are familiar with the history or people who are not. Um, so just having that background. Um, and the other tip would be be yourself. Um, be sure to bring part of you to the program. I think this is a, a, a project that invokes passions and um, motivates people to change the world. So make sure that that's clear to your students so they really know how important these small changes can be for their lifestyles. Um, because I do very hands-on uh, sessions. I tell people, no, no, I don't cook, you do. And even if they don't know how to cook, it's all right. We're going to figure it out together. So we have really uh, very dynamic classes where everybody is being involved. I can have five and six people asking me questions at the same time, and that's okay because there may be one person in the class that can help the other person out. Uh, but it's really about having a sense of self and being comfortable with self and what you're doing and, and, and imparting a sense of faith and your participants that you know that they're able to do it and they really, really are. I mean, we've had the most delicious foods. Some teachers sign up knowing exactly where they want to teach. They plan to bring the program to their church or to a nearby community center. Others like the comforts and convenience of teaching right out of their own home. Many teachers become volunteers without an exact location in mind. Finding a venue isn't hard, especially with these tools and tips on outreach. Old Ways A Taste of African Heritage Program sites have included churches, schools, recreation centers, grocery stores, senior centers, community rooms of multifamily housing units, community clinics, home kitchens, community gardens, and farmer's markets. If you're teaching from your home kitchen, many teachers enjoy teaching in the comforts of their own kitchen. Familiarity with the space and cookware, as well as having personal extras on hand, all add to the ease and enjoyment of a home-cooked class. Another option is to contact a local church. Many churches already have initiatives to help their members improve their health and well-being. Some even have health ministries dedicated to this kind of work. Meet with the church leaders, call the office, or send an email. You can find out this kind of information on many church websites. Old Way staff can also provide you with an outreach email template to help you introduce yourself in the program. Get to know local organizations in your community. There are many organizations dedicated to supporting the health and wellness of their communities. Do a Google search of community centers, churches, wellness centers, African American chambers of commerce, senior centers, community gardening initiatives, community groups, grocery stores, and small businesses within the neighborhoods to which you would like to bring a taste of African heritage. Use the outreach email template to connect. Utilize your connections. Do you have a dietitian or health professional in your family or circle of friends? You could engage them as a co-teacher or ask if their place of work would be open to hosting the series or if they've worked in the community before. Are you on the PTA at your child's school? 
ask the principal or director of programs if they would be open to hosting a parent engagement class held in the school after hours. Lastly, you can also reach out to your local city or state health department. Many health departments have health and nutrition goals and initiatives already in place, and they're often looking for more programs to offer to their communities. Let them know about A Taste of African Heritage to add to their roster of programs. Once you've confirmed the details of your upcoming class, please add your class to our online class directory, even if it's not open to the public. This helps us track our reach and helps you increase awareness for your class and learn about other teachers or sites in your area. In order to make the strongest impact, we want to keep our students motivated and connected throughout the classes and coming back week to week. Before scheduling your class, learn about your audience, their constraints, and their schedule. Is your site accessible by public transportation? For the majority of your students, would a weekday, weeknight, or weekend class be best? Can you or your site provide childcare during class for those who need it? These kinds of questions will help you shape the most inclusive and successful six-week program with your students. You can also try keeping student handbooks until graduation day. It's easy to attend a first class, receive the materials for all subsequent classes, and decide not to come back. Past teachers recognized this and decided to hold on to their student handbooks until graduation day. Have students return their handbooks at the end of each class after writing down the week's homework assignment. Let students know during the first class that if they come to at least five out of the six classes, they will receive the student handbook as a graduation gift to keep. Lastly, create an inviting atmosphere. If you love to cook with music, bring in your favorite tunes to cook to. If you have any kitchen decorations, cloths, or tapestries that you don't mind bringing in, showcase those. Market your class as a weekly family meal. Make eating together special in any way you wish. Teachers need to make sure to know where first aid kits, fire extinguishers, and other safety tools are in case of emergency. Teachers also need to be aware of any food allergies or food restrictions so that students are not unknowingly putting themselves at risk. General food safety practices are important for everyone to learn and practice. As you're washing your hands, cleaning produce, chopping, and cooking, point out these safety and sanitation measures to your students to draw attention to them. Most of these points are self-explanatory, but they are worth reminding your students. Also, hot behind and knife behind are important to verbally let people know when you're behind them with a hot pan or a dish or a knife to avoid a dangerous collision. To make sure that A Taste of African Heritage helps teachers and students make lasting changes, it is very important that we measure the program's impacts through confidential student surveys and, where possible, physical health measurements. The entrance and exit surveys give us a before and after snapshot of how the program has impacted students' daily cooking and eating habits. They also give us critical feedback about the program. For efficiency and consistency, distribute the student entrance and exit surveys at the end of lessons one and six respectively. If a new student comes on the second week of class, make sure that he or she fills out the entrance survey at that time. If any students miss the last class, request a digital copy of the exit survey from our team and email missing students a copy to fill out and return. A missing entrance or exit survey from a student gives an incomplete picture. We appreciate your help in gathering this important data. The results and feedback we receive will continue to help us make A Taste of African Heritage the most effective program it can be. Graduation day, or the day of the last class, is a time for reflection, celebration, and community and is the perfect place to set intentions for how students plan to carry these healthy habits forward and throughout the community. 
In many class series, the final class is a potluck, where each student is invited to prepare a dish from the handbook or a recipe of his or her own using ingredients covered in class. You can also use the final class to reflect on student takeaways. Have students share the most useful and meaningful thing they will take away from this series. Did they discover a new food in this program? Are they inspired to cook more often? If so, what barriers to cooking were broken down for them? Another way to end the class is with goal setting. One teacher in Ohio asked each of her students to bring one healthy lifestyle goal to the last class to share with the group. Sharing a goal out loud empowers individuals with greater responsibility and resolve. Finally, the last class is a great opportunity to carry the torch. Ask your students how they would like to carry on this program to achieve their goals for healthy eating and living. Would they enjoy getting together for monthly potlucks after graduation? Do they want to start an email list together or a group meetup? Do they want to become a Taste of African Heritage teachers themselves? Or would they like to host a social event like an African Heritage and Health Fair or block party based on heritage foods in their communities? Once you know what your group would like to do going forward, you will be able to organize future gatherings or appoint a volunteer group leader to keep gatherings going. The most common response we hear from students on graduation day is that they wish the classes didn't have to end. Six weeks goes by quickly, and for many, a taste of African heritage classes mark the beginning of a new journey and approach to healthy eating and living. As with any journey, students benefit even more with continued support. In addition to staying connected through Old Ways social media outlets, like Old Ways Facebook and Twitter pages, here are a few other ideas for working with your students and communities in the long run. Appoint group leaders. If your schedule doesn't permit continued hosting, ask for volunteers to coordinate and host weekly or monthly potlucks, walking groups, restaurant outings, or other group activities that continue to keep students together and motivated on their healthy journey. Encourage students to become African heritage and health leaders in their communities. Some of the best ways that students can keep this program alive are to become a Taste of African Heritage instructors themselves or to organize monthly heritage potlucks in their communities. Teach again. There is no limit to how many classes a teacher can teach throughout the year. If you taught your first series in your home kitchen, consider teaching the class again in a public community space. If you've established a relationship with your program site, Discuss offering a Taste of African Heritage on a regularly scheduled basis so that more prospective students can find you and the program. Host single day events in your community. Share about the African Heritage Diet throughout your community. You can use key messages and components from the A Taste of African Heritage program to offer short presentations or cooking demos at a local church, your child's school, a farmer's market, community center, or health fair. Request brochures from Old Ways to distribute at your next event. When teaching children in a children's taste of African heritage, here are some additional tips to help you out. Enlist the help of a teaching assistant, especially for larger classes. Keep the kids moving. Put extra focus on kitchen safety. Make class inviting and welcoming to all. And most importantly, have fun. Sometimes our teachers get contacted by the media because local papers and news outlets want to run a story on the classes. If this happens to you, here is the protocol. First, respond as soon as possible and thank them for getting in touch. Let them know you're happy to speak with them and we'll get back to them as soon as possible. Next, Email Old Ways at media at oldwayspt.org. Please send the complete details of the media request, including the name of the journalist, the name of the newspaper, radio station, or blog, and their contact info. 
Also, please let us know what they plan to write about, your class or the program in general, and also if there's a deadline. Old Ways will get back to you as soon as possible and let you know how to proceed. We will either have you reply directly to the media or we will contact the media ourselves. Um, just kind of depends on the situation. Next, review talking points so you can discuss Old Ways, A Taste of African Heritage, the African Heritage and Health Program, and additional Old Ways work knowledgeably. As you read, try to put them in your own words so you can speak naturally and comfortably. Talking points will, pe will be provided to you when your media engagement is set. We hope this webinar has been a helpful introduction to our Taste of African Heritage programming. If you'd like to learn more, here are some books to guide you. Many of them are authored by advisors to Old Ways African Heritage and Health Program. So you can see the list on our screen here. Thank you for being a part of A Taste of African Heritage. Teachers like you are instrumental to the success of the program. For more information, please visit our website, oldwayspt.org. We have lots more information and resources. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our email is provided on the slide, info at oldwayspt.org. Thank you.